Hi, I'm Anastasia and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you about how much math and programming do you need to know to take the deep learning specialization on Coursera. Andrew Ng is one of the most famous people in machine learning and it's really well deserved. As a follow-up to his really successful machine learning course in 2011, he released a deep learning specialization on Coursera with the goal to train the next 1 million AI experts. It's one of the most popular online courses now. After taking it, anyone can learn how to program a self-driving car or build a chatbot or even maybe build Skynet? It's really been one of my favorite courses that I've ever taken on the Coursera platform and I didn't even have a background in computer science when I took the course. But I think there's a few prerequisites that are really helpful before you dive into the deep learning specialization. And if you don't have this background knowledge yet, don't worry. It's actually pretty easy to get enough of that to take the deep learning specialization. I'm going to post any links or resources that I mentioned below in the description box. As a disclaimer, I did work for Coursera during the time that this specialization came out. And I did work a little bit with Andrew's team on putting it together. That said, I think that means that I know the content pretty well and I did take the full specialization after it launched and even built a few projects using the knowledge. The prerequisites for deep learning fall into these major three categories. Number one, Python programming. Intermediate Python programming is recommended, but if you've taken an introductory Python programming course, you're really good to go for this specialization. You do not need to know anything about classes or objects. You should know a little bit about Python data structures like dictionaries, loops, writing to and from files, but honestly, a lot of the setup work is already done for you. If you're completely new to Python, I really recommend the Python for Everybody specialization from the University of Michigan. It's taught by Dr. Chuck, and he's one of the most amazing instructors on the platform. You definitely should finish at least the first course and half of the second course to really be successful in the deep learning specialization. Dr. Chuck has also written a companion textbook to his specialization. The first course covers chapters one through five, and the second course covers chapters six through 10. In the deep learning specialization itself, they do use a few concepts that are a little past the introductory stage. So for example, they do talk about Python broadcasting and using the NumPy library. But don't worry, they actually cover these concepts in the specialization itself with optional videos and assignments. So if you're new to Python, I really recommend doing those as well. Number two is mathematics. Linear algebra is the core of machine learning and deep learning. And so Andrew Ng's original course, the machine learning course on Coursera, has a refresher in week one that covers all the concepts you need to know to be successful in machine learning and deep learning. If you need more, Khan Academy is a great place to learn linear algebra from scratch. Coursera has now also released a mathematics for machine learning specialization, and the first course specifically covers linear algebra that you need to know for deep learning. And number three is machine learning. Every good deep learning researcher has a really solid foundation in machine learning, so I'd recommend taking the first three weeks of the original machine learning course. Week four introduces neural networks. So after you've gotten a solid grasp on general machine learning concepts and regression, you can just transition over to the deep learning specialization and start there. Another really interesting new course that I found is the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course. It's very hands-on and gets you coding immediately with the in-browser Jupyter Notebooks. So I hope you see here, you really don't need a ton of background knowledge to take the deep learning specialization. Even if you have none of the background, just by taking the first three weeks of the original machine learning course and doing that linear algebra refresher, plus two courses in the Python for Everyone specialization, you can be ready to take the deep learning specialization in just a couple of months. So what's missing from the specialization and what are the next steps after you finish it? One thing I really found missing from the specialization was the knowledge on how to actually create a data set and how to pre-process it yourself. I felt like I could take the deep learning concepts and apply them to a data set, but I didn't actually know how to build my own. In data science, you spend 80% of the time preparing the data and 20% of the time complaining about preparing the data. Another thing is that it doesn't really cover the deep learning libraries that deeply. And that's okay, it never promised to do that, and you do use TensorFlow and Keras, more in the last weeks of the specialization, but it's by no means a deep dive. And there's a ton of other libraries like PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, FastAI, the list goes on and on. And I didn't feel like an expert in any of them, but I knew how to read the documentation and understand what I needed to use for my projects. So hours later, after I finished the specialization, I embarked on my first deep learning project from scratch. And I really wanted to build a convolutional neural network to classify yoga poses. And I really wanted to build everything from scratch. And like I mentioned, this is where I really ran into that knowledge gap on creating the datasets themselves. In the course, a lot of the datasets are already loaded, they're clean, they're perfect to give you the results they want, and that's just not real life. It was really educational for me to collect the data myself to understand what it takes like to build this ideal dataset. 
So I had to figure out how to structure the folders, what images would work, how to do these data augmentation techniques. All of that is really important for becoming a good deep learning practitioner. By the way, if you have no idea what kind of project you wanna do, check out the Keras and Kaggle websites for inspiration. They have really nice lists of data sets that have really interesting problems that you can solve. I decided to build a yoga pose classifier. It would take an image and tell you which one of 10 yoga poses it was. Now, I'm really bad at yoga and I don't do a lot, but there's this Disney movie that I used to love as a kid called Ice Princess. And it was about this girl who did competitive ice skating and she coded this app computer program to analyze her spins and tell her how to do them better. And I found that really inspiring. So I wanted to do my own version with yoga and deep learning. Also, the nice thing about yoga poses is that there's a ton of images out there. And Google and Flickr will both let you search according to the license type, which means you can actually use them in your deep learning applications. Two resources were really helpful for getting me started on this project. The first one is building an image classifier using deep learning on becominghuman.ai. The second is image classification using very little data from the Keras blog. However, neither of these resources were plug and play for my application. First of all, they're binary classifiers, so they only differentiated between two different image types, and I wanted to differentiate between 10 different yoga poses. I ended up having to solve a few issues with my image selection, so non-ideal image types, do hand cleanups, and also get Keras to accept those different types of images. Again, this is not something that's hard to do, but when you're in an ideal environment like a course, you don't really run into it until you set off on your own and start doing a project. By the way, you can click the description down below, and I've linked my code, my data set, and a blog post explaining everything I did for this project. After training for 50 rounds, I had an accuracy of about 95%. Of course, this was using a tiny training set and a tiny test set. I think I had maybe 200 images total without using data augmentation techniques. The images that I used were fairly clean and simple because I spent time cleaning them out by hand. So for example, there's a mountain pose, which is just hands straight up, you're looking like a mountain, and there's pictures from the front and from the side. However, I didn't want to use both types, so I chose just the images that had it from the front. This made it easier for the neural network to differentiate between that and other poses. So this shows you can get a pretty good convolutional neural network going in just a few hours. That's how long it took for me to put together the data set and put together all the code that I need for training. Of course, then we need to actually train the model. In the deep learning specialization, you do most of your work inside the browser in a Jupyter notebook. This is great because you don't have to deal with any of the computer setup. Unfortunately, that meant that after finishing the course, I didn't really know how to train the data on my laptop. And I had a Mac, so the GPUs aren't compatible with deep learning. My project took a ridiculous amount of time to train, even on this tiny data set. The fast.ai website and MOOC were my next stop. They really helped me figure out how to scale up my deep learning training. I didn't want to buy a whole new computer just for the GPU, so I looked into cloud resources. For example, you can rent time on the Google Cloud platform. They actually now have TensorFlow VMs that come with everything pre-installed to do deep learning training. Paperspace Gradient was another platform that I tried, and is built specifically for deep learning and data science applications. So I was familiar with a lot of these features like in-browser Jupyter Notebooks. Also, their free tier is enough to get you started on any project. Or you can use Google Colab. These are in-browser Jupyter notebooks that you've already seen in the deep learning specialization, but you'll have to do some of the setup yourself. All of these options make it so much easier to do your own projects. I didn't know about any of these when I was starting out, so it took me overnight to train my model. So after you do the deep learning specialization, what can you do next? So deeplearning.ai has recently released a natural language processing or NLP specialization on Coursera as well. I'm really excited about this one because I did feel like the NLP coursework in the original specialization was a little bit light. Natural language processing lets you do things like sentiment analysis, which tells you if a review is positive or negative, lets you summarize text, translate languages, or even build chatbots. There's also a self-driving car specialization that has been released from another university, and it teaches you about visual perception. After taking the deep learning specialization, you have the background to take that self-driving cars course. Self-driving cars are a really fascinating technology and it'd be really fun in theory to say that you could actually program a self-driving car. I definitely think they're the future and for me, I'd feel way more comfortable getting in one if I knew a little bit more about how they work. So that's my incentive for taking that course. So thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me that you spent this time here with me. And if you enjoyed this video or if I gave you some useful resources, please annihilate the like button for the YouTube algorithm. 
And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe for more videos about quantum computing, deep learning, and other fun tech nonsense. And remember, I have a bunch of resources down in the description box. And remember to comment if you have any questions or build something really cool after you've taken this course.